Hello and welcome back to Up the Villa podcast. This is our predicted lineup for Aston Villa v Zwinski Mostar in the Europa Conference League. So, what have we got planned on this episode? We have predicted lineup. We also have an opposition piece from a Zwinski Mostar fan who uh, has kindly told me all about Zwinski Mostar so we can get their perspective on how they're feeling heading into this game. And then we'll also chat about that VAR video, the audio debacle. And we'll get into that at the end of this episode. So it's going to be an interesting lineup from Villa. Um, I expect changes. I expect minimum of four. I think we'll see changes in this game. We have to, in my opinion, because... We've got a huge game on Sunday. Uh, and, you know, if we win that game, we potentially go into the top four. We could skyrocket. Um, so changes will be needed. Changes will be required. There are certain players that need a break, that need a rest, that have played a lot of minutes. It needs rotating. We are still only two games into the, the European group. Um, so let's just manage the group, as Unai, I think he would say he's trying to do, manage the personnel um, and just, yeah, just rotate what's needed, to be fair. So uh, let's have a little look then before we start at the lineup that we had against Legia Warsaw. We had Martinez, Luca Dean, Longley, Consat, Chambers, Tienemans, Kamara, Bailey, McGinn, Zaniolo and Duran. So that was the lineup against Legia Warsaw. So I'm going to do my lineup now. What I'd love you guys to do at home is share your thoughts on your lineup, who you would play, who you would rotate. Drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are new. So in goal for me is going to be Emmy Martinez. He has to play in goal. He just calms that back line, whoever plays in that back line. Big time player. I think our first game at Villa Park under the lights in Europe, you know, he's going to be absolutely chomping at the bit to be playing in this game. Um, so I would go Martinez in goal. The back line, like always at the minute, is the most trickiest one to predict because I would like to rotate it. I'd like to rotate the majority of it and bring in our sort of Moreno's, etc. But he's not ready. He's not fit. He's not. He's not there, so we can't do that. So it poses different problems. But I think you know players like Longley need to start getting some minutes. He missed out on the Everton game, um, and I think we need to do enough rotation in the back line to rest certain players, but then sort of still be quite strong at the same time. So. I'm going to go cash in this game. I'm going to start cash because I think Luke Dean's got a big job on his hands against Neto at Wolves. So I, I want to keep Luke Dean really fresh. And I'm going to go with sort of a back three of Pau. I'm going to go Carlos and I'm going to go Chambers. No, I'm not. What am I doing? I'm not going Chambers. I'm going Longley. So I'm going to swap them around. And I'm going to go with that. That is going to be my back four. So, in essence, Cash will be bombing on. These guys will shift into that three. And they'll make a solid flat three. If required, we can have defensive screening from the uh, CDM in the double pivot. Which will give us more strength anyway there. So, that defensive screening should allow more protection anyway. But that's what I'm going to go with. I think Pau can shift into that sort of left back, left centre back role. Long lay and Carlos in there. It gives minutes to Long lay. It gives minutes to Carlos. They can get up to speed. And I think that's pretty much a solid back four. If I'm being honest, I really like it. So we'll move into the um, double pivot then. And we're going to go with. We are going to go with Den Donka and we are going to go with Yuri Tielemans. I think this partnership needs to grow a little bit more. There needs to be a bit of a better understanding. 
I think with Den Donka, more minutes in those legs for me. So, yes, he's he's playing. He played last Wednesday. He's, he'll play again on Thursday. And that sort of gives him, like, game time. Like, he's playing more than he was playing last season. You know, a, a game a week, which is pretty much what we were playing last season. So, for me, that's my double pivot. I don't want to see Kamara. I don't want to see Douglas Luiz. I want to see those two. I want to see them commanding. I want to see them bossing that midfield. But I think here's where they get a little bit more legs. So they're going to get legs in this game because they're going to have a Jacob Ramsey, who is going to get hopefully 70, 80, 90 minutes in this game. So he will be getting minutes into his legs, helping out Yuri Tielemans on that sort of left-hand side. And then we are going to go with Zaniolo. I'm going to go Zaniolo. I'm going to go on the right-hand side. So this is going to be his opportunity on his preferred side to really see what he's all about in this game as well. So, so far, I like that team. I think it's got a good balance about it. Up top, we are going to go with John Duran and we are going to go with Troy Ore. So Zaniolo and Ramsey will be making up that box midfield. Troyore will be drifting out wide and surveying that area through there. Um, so I think that's my team. There's a lot of rotation in there. And I don't mind it. I think that would be my team. So I'd love to hear what your teams are going to be. Um, but that for me is my team. That's the team I'd go with. I think it's resting Consa, it's resting, Kamara and Luis, Watkins um, and DRB as well. If they're on the bench, then fine. But I think that team's decent. So that's what I would go with, uh, with a view for the weekend and the game against Wolves, which is a huge game. So I reached out to a Zerinsky Mostar fan and... Um, I asked him if he could give me some words on how they're feeling, on their team, how they play, on their best players. Because we did our part the, um, on the, the match preview with AVFC scouts and uh, it went down really well. And so the Zurinsky Mostar fan, Lovrin Joe, Lov, Lovrin Joe, uh, I think that's what his name is. So thank you so much for doing this for me. He went on to say, uh, by the way, I saw your video today. The Zurinsky name pronunciations made me laugh several times. <laughs> so, yeah, I absolutely butchered their striker. Uh, I think he went on to say that the striker. Um, and yes, the striker Bill Bijia pronunciation was by far the worst. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm getting absolutely terrored. But, um, yeah, so this is what he went on to say. Uh, for us, this is a historic game. But more importantly, it's a treat. For the journey we've had to get to this point, we've never faced a club such as Aston Villa, one of the biggest clubs in English football, as what we usually say here, if we face a very tough opponent, whatever happens, happens. We will play till the end. We won't be going to Birmingham for a trip. So, great mentality from them, to be fair. Absolute great mentality. Players to look out for, I'd say Tomislav Kiss, the number 10 in our system, who always makes an impact when we play, whether it's sit setting up a good assist or scoring a good goal. A creative, a very creative and intelligent player that has a lot of experience under his belt. He makes very good through balls. One pass I would mention is the one pass he made to, here we go, <laughs> Malenusic for the fourth goal. It was simply lovely to see in person. Another player I'd mention is Josip Koluka, our very solid right back who likes to make through balls and great crosses to our attackers and wingers. Of course, that beautiful goal versus Alkmaar, it was a great goal, a great finish. He also isn't hesitant to go 
uh, for the ball aggressively. And he doesn't mind a sliding tackle either. And of course, I have to mention our captain and Bosnian Premier League all-time top goal scorer, Nemanja Bilbija, a real leader on the pitch who during a game will want the ball as much as possible as he's a real goal scorer and would often tell teammates where to pass the ball when he's in the box after a missed chance. Also, his heading ability is incredible. Most of the goals he scored last season are headers, which are rare for a player under six foot. As for our style, we mostly play a possession-based style. Once we get the ball, we will pass it from one end to the other end of the pitch until we find a good position to play the ball in two forwards and wingers. We usually like to attack from the wings where our fullbacks try to find Bill Vigiat via crosses. Our fullbacks get through ball to our wingers where they pass to either Bill Vigiat, Kiss or Ivancic. So that's a great, great piece uh, from our Zhirinsky Mostar opposition fan. So thank you so much for sharing those thoughts. We'll be back in touch anyway uh, on the reverse leg in December anyway. So we'll hear more thoughts uh, from them. So yeah, it's nice to get an understanding of how they play uh, and, you know, their mindset coming into this game. And, you know, it's a massive game for them. And I imagine that they're going to want to put on a bit of a show at Villa Park. So uh, yeah, there we go. Right. VAR. We heard the terrible audio from that VAR decision uh, for Liverpool and Spurs. And my thoughts are, it is absolutely ridiculous what we was hearing. You know, you, you gauge the understanding of, of what was happening in there. So you go to the general normal check of, they were checking the lines, draw the 2D lines, they draw the 2D lines, uh, and then they just go, VAR say, yep, check complete. So from that there, VAR are basically saying check complete, that is offside. So they've drew all the lines, yep, check complete. Now the ref, the ref on the pitch knows that they are checking the offside. So as, as the ref on that pitch, so far, he understands that it's offside. So he's hearing, yep, check complete. So he's going, it's offside. So he's blue to play on. And the VAR is saying it's a goal, check complete. On field, are thinking VAR, check complete, offside. And it's just one big mess. And the one thing that I can't understand when I'm watching it and listening is the terminology, the vocabulary that, that's being used that's just not there. You know, it's like when you, when you watch something like that, what you want to have is sort of like terminology to a T, sort of, you know, you'd expect it to be from VAR's point of view that when they relay the information to the ref, you're hearing stuff like VAR, checking possible offside, VAR, draw 2D lines, player onside, VAR's decision, VAR are saying that it's sort of, we are saying that it's a goal, basically. And then the ref has to relay that information back. Okay, just confirming VAR, goal. VAR, yep, goal, draw the lines, whatever. That type of back and forth terminology. But when I'm listening to that VAR, I can't even hear the ref. The, the ref's not even in the conversation. The ref's just chilling. The ref's just walking around. He's just doing his thing. And then you've got head of audio, head of visual, head of VAR. They're the ones that are in deep conversation. And I, I can't, I just can't understand that there's that that correct terminology. So now, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I can understand why it's an absolute shit show because they're not even, like, communicating with each other properly and it's just such a bad decision. And then I'm I'm hearing, like, talk sport or pundits or whatever saying, like, why didn't, when the ball went back out of play, they stopped the game? But you can't do that. You can't, 
you can't play on and then be like, oh, actually, we've we've fucked up here. Like, uh, we're going to bring this back now. Don't work like that. Soon as that ref blows to play on, you play on. I'm not having this whole, he's made a mistake, you've got to intervene. Because at the end of the day, remember the Crystal Palace one that we had? As soon as that ref blew that whistle, play's done. You can't go, you can't override that whistle. So it has to be done there and then with the correct sort of protocol, basically. And I think it shows that it's not the technology, it's the people that are using it. It's just, it's just, it's just baffling, and that they've, they've got to really fix up big time. And one area that I've always thought about these offsides, which I don't understand, and I still don't understand, is the camera. I, I, I really don't understand the camera angle of being up there. So that camera angle sort of is always up really high. And it's always never in line with the like the action on field. The camera angle is always up above, looking down at an angle. Now, for me, that's the wrong angle for me. I don't understand why they can't have a camera that's on a rail that is just going along the pitch motion detecting the players of where the players are so that camera in essence is like a linesman you don't put the linesman up there to make the decisions so why is the camera up there if you had a camera that was on a rail that follows the player's motion that is potentially in front of the lino it doesn't have to be a big camera it just has to be a little thing that's just following and you can get the camera to stop right in front of the players that are offside anyway, you would get such a clear image rather than looking down and looking at a toenail and, and trying to assess whether that's offside from up there. But I just think it's all very, very weird. But yeah, that offside debacle of them communicating and just one big mess. There needs to be a confirmation window where they communicate and they make their final decision. Because really, if if I understand in the stands at Villa Park what's happening, I don't mind it taking five minutes. But the problem we've got is that when it takes so long and you're in the you're in the stadium and they don't put on the screen what they're checking and you're just standing there and you're waiting, you're thinking, fucking hell, hurry up. That's where the problem is. Whereas with a correct protocol, there would be no issue with us hearing the audio because it would be so professional. So if they said, if it came on the tannoy, we could all hear it when we're watching a the game. They are checking offside decision. First words that we hear. We would be like, okay, cool. Then we hear VAR. VAR drawing lines, checking possible offside. The ref goes, okay, confirmed. They get their decision and they have a look and they've took their time. They go, VAR, check complete, goal offside. The referee goes, are you confirming goal offside? VAR can then have a pause. Yep, we're checking offside, confirmed offside if we can hear that then it's perfect it's a professional way of talking it's the professional terminology and it's relaxed and i, I just i think it needs to be something similar to that um and we would all have a better understanding and we can accept it taking time we can accept decisions uh, and just yeah just commute the communication needs to be there because basically we're not trusting the technology. We're having to trust the people to use the technology. So it has to be done to like the minutest of detail. So yeah, one big mess. 
but ridiculous right so anyway there's my little var there's the the Zrinski Mostar fan talking about how they're feeling. That's my predicted lineup. My lineup is this. Um, so enjoy the game, everybody. We will be doing fan cams after the game. So if you want to come and get involved, come and join us for fan cams straight after the game. Uh, and that's where I'll be doing sort of my match reaction because it'll be late so there'll be no match reaction it will be the fan cams that will be going out after the game with our reaction so yeah cheers everybody thanks for all the love on the channel up the villa